When carp fishing, it's very important to try and locate areas of the lake where the carp are likely to feed and also areas that you can present your chosen rigs. So today's video is gonna be about feature finding with a lead and a marker float. Certain types of substrate on the bottom of the lake or river that you're fishing will require different types of rigs. Because of that, you really wanna find out what you're fishing over. Is it weed, clay, silts, gravel? The way to do that is by using a marker setup. My marker setup is a spod or marker rod. Uh, it's basically like any other type of cart rod, but it's a lot stiffer. I think it has a test curve of about four pounds. You don't need it to be nice and soft because you're not gonna play any fish on it. It's simply to chuck a big lead out or throw your spod or, um, or your spawn out into the lake. The important thing with your marker setup is that on the reel, you have braid. I've got braid here and the reason for using it is because there's no stretch. So if you imagine the lead is on the bottom and it's dragging through the swim, because there's no stretch, you feel every little indication through the line uh, to your rod tip. If you were to use monofilament, it would stretch, or even fluorocarbon, there's a bit of stretch in that. And that means that you won't be feeling in contact with the lead on the bottom. So a little bit later on in this video, we're gonna look at uh, using marker floats to find the depth of the lake. But to start off, rather than using that float, we're just trying to work out what the lake bed is like, what substrate is down there. And for that, we're just gonna use a normal lead. This weighs four ounces. I have a loop on the end of my braid, so I'll loop this on. And we'll try and work out what's going on on the lake bed out in front of us. With your lead attached to your braid on your spod or marker rod, it's now time to make a cast into the lake. Make the cast, and just before it hits the surface, put your finger on the spool so that the line between your rod tip and the lead out in the lake is tight. That lead will slowly fall through the water. Well, it will fall quite quickly through the water, actually. And when it reaches the bottom, you will feel something through the rod tip. How that rod tip reacts will tell you what the lake bed is most probably made of. I know that seems a little bit crazy to someone who hasn't done this before, but you can figure out what the lake bed is made of by the feeling on that rod tip. So first of all, there is silt. The lake that I'm at today is a very silty lake. So when the lead falls down onto silt, it kind of feels like the lead's falling down onto a pillow. You will feel the rod and it will just stop. It doesn't suddenly stop. And sometimes if the silt is very deep, you don't even feel it at the bottom. It just sort of slowly just stops falling. Silt is uh, quite easy, it's easy to know that you're fishing in silt because you either won't feel the lead hit the bottom or you'll feel it hit the bottom very, very slowly and gently. It's not very distinguishable. However, switch things up and you're fishing on, uh, or, or you cast to a spot that happens to have gravel on the bottom, gravel or indeed very hard clay, you'll know about it. You'll feel the rod down and the rod tip will snap back. You know, the lead will be falling, 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 and then it will pop straight. And that crack or that, that donk, as carp anglers describe it, tells you that you, your lead has hit something firm. That firm lake bed uh, often indicates that fish have been feeding in the area because they've removed any of the silt or debris on the bottom. And it can be a good place to target and put your rigs. Another thing you might experience is when casting out the lead, it kind of falls down and jolts a bit as it falls down. It's going down and then it starts and stops. That can sometimes mean you've hit snags or bits of weed. As the lead's falling, it kind of bumps into things on the way down. And it doesn't really, it's hard to tell what you've, what you've cast into. And that's where the next stage comes in. Now that your lead has hit the bottom, you can then drag it back across the lake bed. By holding the rod to one side and tightening down, you can then draw the rod along to the side. And as that lead is dragged across the bottom, you can gain more information about what's going on down there. If you've just cast into silt, it's quite possible that you go to drag it and actually you can't because the lead has gone, it's plugged straight into the, uh, the, the thick silt on the bottom. Once you pop it out of the silt, it will normally just drag through slowly Sometimes getting a little bit stuck and then it comes out and it, it's quite smooth dragging through silt. You know, you're dragging that lead through and, and it will feel just smooth as the rod just gradually pulls along. 
if you've landed in gravel, pulling the rod back, will it will rattle the bumps of the uh, gravel on the bottom as the lead bounces across it, it will really show that through the rod tip. And as you can see here, that th this, this particular shot is of a lead being dragged across very clean gravel. It's clearly, clearly uh, obvious what you're dragging back through when you find the gravel spot. If the lake bed is made up of firm clay, it will probably drag back relatively smoothly. It won't be as rattly as gravel, and it won't be as smooth and cloggy as silt, it will sort of run across the surface, almost skim across the surface as you drag the rod back. Finally, there is weed. If you've landed in weed and you try to drag the lead back, it will probably get stuck and you'll be yanking it and it'll pop out and it will get stuck again. Uh, another indication that you've landed in weed is that when you reel in, there might actually be a little bit of weed stuck uh, on your lead. There's actually a type of lead I have in my box here. This, kind of got like, uh, prongs sticking out of it. I believe it's called a probe lead or something along those lines. What this enables you to do is actually chuck it out, drag it back through and you get to see firsthand what's on your spot because it drags back some of it. If there's uh, leaf litter or twigs and branches you can sometimes pull them out with it. You can also use this to clean a spot to retrieve you know small bits of weed from the bottom uh, to make that part of the lake a little bit cleaner. What I would say though if you're going to use one of those legs, leads you know with the prongs on it don't go chuck it into a massive weed bed. That can be very dangerous because you throw it in, try and pull it back, it gets really clogged up and you end up snapping your line because you, you, your line isn't strong enough to pull all that weed in. So if you're gonna use one of these, one of these leads with the, with the prongs on it, uh, don't cast too far. Little cast, work your way out to the spot because if it gets stuck, uh, it, it does tend to grab a lot of weed and um, yeah, you don't want to snap your line. Just whilst I think of it, it's also worth just, take, just checking your lead after you've made a cast because sometimes if you're on a particularly clean uh, clay spot and you make a cast, especially with quite a large lead that cracks down, hits the bottom hard, when you reel it in, there might be a bit of clay actually on the lead. That's a good indicator of what, of what you're fishing over as well. So it's worth just checking whether or not you've brought back a little bit of silt or clay on the lead. So let's say you've made a few casts and you found an area that you'd like to investigate further. When you're on the spot and you're dragging it through and you're like, oh, I like that bit, Take your line and put it into the line clip on your reel. That'll enable you to cast out again and land the lead in the same area. Once you've made a few casts to the same distance and you've worked out a particular distance and a particular spot that you like uh, the feel of, maybe it's a small gravel spot in amongst a load of silt or it's a, a firm bit of clay uh, on the edge of some weeds. You've put the line in the clip. Now you want to be able to put some bait out there with your spod rod or maybe you want to actually just clip up your, your fishing rods and cast them to that spot. You can reach that same area time and time again by using distance sticks. By placing two distance sticks in the ground, uh, a rod length apart, you can uh, reel in your rod that you found the spot with, drop your lead down next to one of the distance sticks and count the number of times you have to wrap around those sticks until you get to your clip. So you wrap around, get to the clip, remember that number. Now, by using that number of wraps, you can actually take any rod on any day, even on your next session, and cast straight back out and land it on exactly the same place that you found the session before. This is a, a massive edge in fishing, and that enables you to pre-bait spots, consistently fish the same areas, turn up uh, in a swim that you fished previously, and cast straight back to the exact spot without having to chuck the lead around and try and find it. Using the distance sticks really helps with finding and remembering certain areas of the lake to fish in the future. One thing I would say is that my memory isn't great, so once I've counted the number of times I have to wrap around to get to a certain spot, uh, I'll make a note in my phone or in a notepad uh, just the number of wraps and also the, the marker on the far bank that I was, that I was casting to. Uh, that helps you remember your spots exactly. I'd also say make sure you stand in the same place when you make a cast because if you just stand you know, in the next swim down or you, you stand a few metres to the side, you won't necessarily be casting to exactly the same spot that you did last time. So by using the lead on the end of some braid, you've been able to work out what the lake bed is like, but now you want to find out how deep it is. Now, without using a marker float, you can just cast a lead into the water 
and count how long it takes to hit the bottom. On average, a one ounce lead seems to take about, um, about a second to fall a foot. So if you cast it out and you go one, two, three, four, it's probably about four uh, feet deep, but that's very rough. And if you're using a flat lead or a, a drilled bullet lead or a gripper lead, they all fall at different speeds, so it's not very accurate. If you're an experienced angler, you can underarm flick a lead out, feel it down and go, hmm, feels about 12 foot. But really, if you want to be accurate and you want to know for certain, you've got to use a marker float. My marker floating setup is the same as the uh, rod that I showed earlier, just for checking the, checking the bottom. I've also got braid on the line, uh, braid on the reel, sorry, because the braid doesn't stretch. But running on the braid is this lead. Using a big lead helps a lot because it will anchor, um, anchor your line in position and, it, and allow the float to pop up above it. So that's the lead sliding on the line. And at the end, I've just looped on a marker float. It's got a little uh, sleeve over the top of the swivel to keep it like nice and neat and prevent tangles. That is as simple as it gets uh, to find the depth. Also available though is a marker float stem that sits underneath the float and helps pop the float up if it's very weedy. However, on somewhere like this where it's not choked with weed, this setup will pop up just fine. I'm gonna make a cast now once I untangle myself. And once it's in the water, we're gonna then work out how deep it is. So you make the cast into the lake to the spot which you've you know, found earlier. And then you wanna reel the line down tight whilst pointing the rod tip directly at the, uh, the float. You, t you tighten down until the float is pulled in with the lead. You feel it pull up, put up a bit of resistance. That's locked in now. I'm definitely on the deck. Whilst pointing the rod uh, still at the float, you just slacken off the clutch. Now on my rod, I've actually got a little marker. This is built into the rod because it's a specific marker rod. And that measures approximately one foot from the uh, reel down to that marker. This way, I can pull off line one foot at a time. If your rod doesn't have a marker, I would suggest grabbing some Tipex or an elastic band and making that distance. Just means you can be more accurate rather than just guessing a foot at a time. What I'm going to do now is pay off line one foot at a time by using uh, the marker on the rod. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> I thought this lake was about five foot deep. Turns out it's a bit deeper. Six. And there you go, the float has popped up on the surface. Now that's just told me that I've actually found a slightly deeper part of this lake than I've probably fished in the past. I always thought it was shallower than that. Anyway, what that has proven is that it's approximately six feet, six feet deep out there. I can now reel it in, and if I want to find out whether or not there's a shelf or if it gets shallower closer to me, I can just stop reeling, slacken off once again, and by using the marker on the rod, just pull it off one foot at a time. With your marker float in the water, the depth found and your spot chosen, it's also a great opportunity to get some bait in nice and accurately. You can leave that marker float in the water whilst you put a few boilies out around it, pre-bait your spot, uh, and even cast your rigs in. Using that marker float as a, as a marker of the spot you're fishing is super accurate. However, I would say that once your rigs are out, I'd reel that uh, marker float in because the, the extra line in the water is more likely to spook those fish off. And if you hook one, it's quite easy for that hooked fish to swim through the marker braid and get tangled. But whilst it's out there, you might as well use it uh, to your advantage so you can bait up and fish really accurately. So far, if we've done our job properly, this video will have taught you how to measure the depth of your swim and also work out what the lake bed is like. However, what do you do with that information? Well, from our experience, we have tended to find if you're on a weedy lake and you find a small gravel spot, it's quite possible that fish feed in that area, so it's worth targeting. If you're fishing on a very silty lake, but you find a small area that's clay and firm, that's probably an area that the fish use either to scratch themselves, 
on the bottom, uh, rub themselves on the bottom to rid themselves of parasites, or it's potentially an area that they feed on regularly and keep it clear. So we're, we're often looking for firmer uh, or unusual patches of the lake bed to, when we're choosing like where we cast. Working out the substrate of the spot you're fishing also helps with choosing what rig to use. Certain rigs present much better over certain lake beds and will work better than others. So for example, if you are fishing over gravel or firm clay, you can get away with using a pop-up or a bottom bait. That's a floating bait or one that lays on the deck. You can also get away with using a nice stiff hook link, which means if a fish picks it up and drops it or doesn't get hooked, it will reset back on the bottom. Uh, something like a stiff hinge rig, you know, with a, with a stiff boom, a Ronnie rig or a, just a standard bottom bait rig with a nice coated braid will work great over a firm, clear lake bed. If the spot that you're fishing is quite silty and soft or there's leaf litter and debris on the bottom, then you're probably going to want to use a pop-up presentation. We really like using uh, a helicopter rig as well if the, if the bottom of the lake is quite soft because the lead can sometimes plunge into it and disappear out of sight. And using a helicopter presentation means that the, your hook link will slide up and still sit on top of the debris on the bottom. The other advantage of using a pop-up uh, presentation is that that pop-up will sit up and above the nasty silt or leaves and all that rubbish on the bottom, meaning your bait is always presented rather than using a bottom bait and it potentially you know, getting stuck underneath some leaves and twigs and being lost in amongst it. A pop-up just keeps your hook bait presented and that can work really well. Finally, there's weed. And if there is low-lying weed, you know, like silkweed, the soft stringy stuff, you can actually use a solid PVA bag. You cast that in, it flattens it out and means you're presented on top of the weed. The other thing that you can do if the weed is a bit thicker and it's really reaching up off the bottom is actually use a chod rig. Almost any other rig cast into weed will just disappear into it and get stuck deep within it uh, and it's unlikely that the fish are going to find your hook bait and also it's quite likely that your hook will get stuck into the weed and then you know your chances of catching is basically nil. The chod rig though is different. The chod rig allows a lead to sink right into that weed and your, your short hook link slides right up and presents your pop-up bait right on top of the weeds meaning you can basically present your bait almost no matter how thick the weeds are, depending on how far you push the bead up on your chod rig. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to tie cart rigs, there's a couple of suggested cart rigs on screen now. So hopefully they help you, and we'll see you guys in the next fishing tutorial.